There is an issue with our desire to travel to every location and see everything when it comes to space. It would take us years to reach our nearest neighbor's star even if we traveled at the fastest rate the universe permits. With the successful testing of this new engine, NASA is one step closer to reaching its dream to explore the depths of space, a goal they have been striving toward for some time. They have introduced a light speed engine that is quicker than anything ever in the aerospace business after years of testing. How does this engine differ from its rivals? What purpose does this engine even serve at light speed? Let's find out. Elon Musk wants to make it possible for people to visit Mars successfully by the year 2050. Elon has a track record of delivering results, so NASA is working with him to achieve that. Yet the thought of traveling to Mars, our solar system's fourth planet, has presented a number of challenges. Today's rockets use methane as their primary fuel rather than the kerosene used in the past, since it would take at least several months for a rocket flying at 15,000 miles per hour to reach Mars, which is situated an average of 140 million miles from Earth. This fuel must be prepared in advance and loaded into the rocket prior to launch in order for the mission to succeed. So how much space and fuel would a rocket that burns 11,000 pounds of fuel per second require? The short answer is that we need a lot, and this is considered when designing a rocket to do such a hazardous mission. The weight and fuel efficiency of a spaceship must be balanced when designing it. The majority of the compartments that contribute to the weight of the craft are set aside for retaining fuel and supplies, leaving only a little section for the astronauts. If you were to examine the existing Starship for the unique mission to Mars, the spacecraft is 120 meters above Earth and has 33 Raptor engines with a 500,000 pound thrust capacity. Even though the engine is designed to be fuel efficient, having adequate fuel for a trip to and from Mars will be difficult. This explains why all the successful Mars trips to this time have been robotic flights, utilizing smaller rockets as astronauts were not needed to utilize additional fuel or supplies required for a crewed mission. Even Elon Musk, who has acknowledged that such a journey will be dangerously difficult and crowded, as well as requiring additional fuel, added to an already hefty vehicle and its increased expenditures, is aware that there is a bumpy road ahead. Suppose they were to safely launch the rocket into Mars' orbit using arrow braking. The potential of the new engine is frequently chemical. Rockets are based on the third rule of motion, which states that the action and reaction forces must be equal in magnitude and directed in opposite directions. This notion is supported by the Falcon 9 Space Shuttle and the current Starship in production, as they all rely on thrusters to generate thrust. The hot exhaust produced when fuel like methane and oxygen are combined in a combustion shaper typically gashes the skin. To hasten takeoff, steam and water are directed through a nozzle. On the other hand, solving significant issues is another human urge. David Burns, a NASA engineer, has been spending his free time working on it. Without the need for propellant, he claims his engine design could hypothetically accelerate to 99% the speed of light. Under the heading Helical Engine, he uploaded it to the NASA Technical Reports server. According to the paper, it operates by taking advantage of the way mass can change at relativistic speeds, or those that are close to the speed of light in a vacuum. An expert has not yet reviewed it. Naturally, this study has generated a lot of buzzes, on par with what was experienced in the early days of the EM drive. Even some headlines suggested that the engine might break the rules of physics. The long-established rules are intended to be broken by this light-speed engine. It will move without a propellant because of the rules of spatial relativity. Things become heavier when they approach the speed of light. Ions are contained in a loop accelerated to moderate speeds and then their velocities are adjusted just enough to modify the masses of the ions. Burns depicts a box with a weight inside, threaded on a line, and springs at either end bouncing the weight back and forth to illustrate his concept. The result of this would be for the entire box to jiggle in a vacuum such as space, with the weight appearing to be stabilized around it, like a gif. Generally, the box would continue to wiggle in the same location, 
but if the weight's mass increased in just one direction, it would produce more thrust in that direction. This shouldn't be entirely possible according to the conservation of momentum principle, which states that a system's momentum stays constant in the absence of any outside forces. But there is a weakness in spatial relativity. Salutations to special relativity. Special relativity states that when an object moves closer to the speed of light, it gains mass. Hence, in theory, you can have the ions traveling more quickly at one end of the loop than the other if you replace the weight with ions and the box with a loop. Burns drive, however, doesn't have a single closed loop. The engine will have a helical construction like a stretched out string with no moving parts other than the ions trapped inside of magnetic and electric fields that will be propelled back and forth in one direction to produce the necessary thrust. He claims that the engine accelerates ions that are contained in a loop to relatively fast relativistic speeds before varying their velocity to slightly alter their mass. The engine then alternately transports ions in the direction of movement to generate thrust. Other than ions traveling in a vacuum line while being imprisoned by magnetic and electric fields, the engine has no moving parts. Yes, it sounds extremely cool, and in theory it is. However, there are huge practical issues with it. This high-speed engine intends to provide thrust without the use of fuel by employing contentious electromagnetic drive technology. David Goodwin noted that if the vibration from the electromagnetic or ions can be directed in one direction, any rocket may be driven into space quicker and farther than any other propulsion system ever used. It may eventually create a potent propulsion system that allows it to move at speeds that are only a tenth of the speed of light. A propellant-free propulsion mechanism is not a brand new concept. In 1990, Goodwin oversaw a NASA study that helped establish the discipline of propulsion physics. In actuality, Roger Schoer invented the first machine in 2001 that showed how the idea of a reactionless drive might work. If the new light-speed engine holds such enormous promise and could allow humanity to explore the high heavens, why are scientists hostile to it? Since the first demonstration in 2001, Scientists from the UK, the US and China have demonstrated how electromagnetic propulsion would work. However, critics claim that this does not mean it is time to celebrate because it's unclear how the propulsion would be used in practice since the earlier tests were not conducted in a vacuum. Because you cannot ionize particles in a quantum vacuum and as a result cannot produce energy, if these studies evaluating a little effect of the device were to be deemed relevant, it could result in measurement mistakes and uncertainty before the project can even get off the ground. The cost of using an EM drive must be considered because it would require extensive study and be quite expensive. Although NASA has already given it $5 million, it is impossible to say how much more will be needed to finish the engine. The law of conversion of momentum, which stipulates that an object's momentum remains constant in the absence of an external force, must be broken in order to achieve momentum in rocketry without a catalyst, as is attempted by this engine. It doesn't seem possible that this new engine will defy conventional principles, which apply to all known forms of motion because the idea of momentum conversion is well established in physics. Will the rocket be able to withstand the torture caused by the meteorite as well? A meteorite is moving towards Earth's atmosphere at a speed of 120,000 miles per second. It violently ignites as it comes into contact with the air molecules there, burning up before it touches the ground. The question of whether a rocket powered by an EM drive might withstand the same impact has arisen since it is now known that meteorites are constructed of cosmic rocks powerful enough to survive entry into Earth. The rocket might burn up upon its return if it were to travel at the speed of light, which would not be ideal. Also, during earlier Mars landings, rockets had to be fired toward the ground to halt the descent. How will the new rocket make a successful landing if it doesn't plan to use thrusters? Skeptics rejoiced when a team from Dresden University led by Martin Tashmar 
showed a weakness in the brand new Lightspeed engine. The spaceship needs to have the right propulsion system since the atmosphere on Mars is dense enough to burn the rocket upon entry. The test results revealed that the push might not be coming from the EM drive but from some other electromagnetic interaction, suggesting that a practical Lightspeed engine may not be feasible. The study asserted to have discovered certain mistakes that prior investigations had overlooked. But NASA has been able to disprove the doubts of other researchers. Researchers on a NASA-funded study put an EM drive through a series of tests at Eagle Works Laboratory to simulate conditions found in deep space. These experiments produced a thrust-to-power ratio that was one to four times higher than any value the drive specifications had projected. We can collaborate and take new ideas into account while discussing space. Roger Shaw, who defended the EM drive, claimed that the highly lauded negative tests were based on a flawed design and that it was impossible to take them seriously given the various opinions and testing done on the drive. Considering all this, it is clear that Elon Musk and NASA will need to put every bit of innovation and effort into perfecting the engine. It cannot, however, be fully ruled out as a means of space travel. If they can muster that much, it will be one of humanity's most major steps towards becoming a multi-planetary species. And now for the second item. More than a few humans, though not all of us, have a strong desire to go to other stars. We might never arrive there, but if we never even attempt to consider it, that may turns into a certainly. Just like the famous saying that suggests you always miss the shots you don't take. The specifications for a fully operational space travel engine aren't quite available here yet. We do, however, have some preliminary work that could be applied to the creation of such an engine. We are living in a galaxy-sized dream after all. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.